Varroa mite life cycle, how one mite founds a population of thousands. The Varroa mite, Varroa destructor, is an external parasite mite infesting honeybee colonies. These mites feed on the fat bodies of honeybees, have spread around the globe, and can be found in the majority of hives worldwide. In addition, they are parasitic to both adult honeybees as well as developing bees within the brood cells of the colony. Imagine for a moment what it must be like having to carry a big mite the size of a soccer ball on your back. If that sounds uncomfortable to you already, consider that individual bees can even carry several mites attached to them at once. However, it's not just about discomfort for the bees. As mentioned earlier, Varroa mites feed on the bee's fat body. To do that, they puncture the bee's cuticle, leaving a gaping wound that never fully heals again. From now on, all kinds of particles, pathogens, and chemicals can enter the body of the punctured bees. In addition, Varroa mites weaken the bees and transmit bee viruses. The most infamous virus is the deformed wing virus, DWV, which leaves bees with dysfunctional wings, preventing them from flying and dramatically reducing their lifespan. If beekeepers do not take action in time, mites can decimate a bee colony within months. Therefore, beekeepers must monitor their hives regularly and implement strategies to lower the Varroa mite infestation as much as possible to prevent damage. But let's go back to the story's beginning, the development of Varroa mites in a honeybee colony. The first Varroa mite enters a colony attached to a worker bee. This bee could have entered the hive by drifting, meaning by accident, although it originates from a different colony. Drifting bees are an easy opportunity for mites to hitchhike from one colony to another. Getting back to our first Varroa mite entering the colony, let's call her Patricia. Patricia is what we call a foundress mite. She's heading towards the bee brood and enters a brood cell shortly before worker bees are capping it with a thin wax layer. Within six hours, Patricia starts to feed on the fat body of the bee larva. A few days after the brood cell is capped, she starts laying her own eggs. The first egg always develops into a male mite, followed by several eggs that develop into females. Days after emerging, these young Varroa females become sexually mature and mate with their own brother, the only male Varroa mite in the cell. Yes, these mites lead a very particular lifestyle. After 21 days, the adult worker bee hatches. Male and immature Varroa mites are not viable, and they die when the bees clean out the cell. Mated and mature female mites, including Patricia, now exit the cell to parasitize adult bees. They will most commonly target young worker bees, especially nurse bees, as they remain close to the brood area and can serve as a vehicle to transport mites to new brood cells. Patricia and her daughters can now parasitize new brood cells, creating generations and generations of new mites. Patricia and her daughters do not only pick worker bee brood cells for their next reproductive cycle. If available, they prefer drone brood cells because it takes 24 instead of just 21 days for drones to develop before they emerge. The longer Patricia and her female king can stay in a brood cell to reproduce, the more mature mite daughters can emerge from the cell in the end. All female foundress mites can live through up to three or four successive reproductive cycles during their lifetime. They adapt to the bee's life cycle and can live for one to two months during the summer months and between six to eight months during the winter. The phase between two reproductive cycles in the bee brood, when Patricia and her daughters and granddaughters attach themselves to adult bees, varies from five to 14 days. During that time, Female mites will often get the chance to transfer to new hives or even disperse to a different apiary, holding on to their hosts as they forage. 50% to 90% of Varroa mites present in a colony are in capped brood cells, depending on the amount of bee brood in the colony. Picture this as an iceberg. If you see one mite on an adult bee, it means many more mites inside the brood, hidden away from prying eyes of the beekeeper. The most dangerous period of the year is when the bee brood, worker, and drone brood declines, causing a mass transfer of the Varroa population from the bee brood to adult worker bees. This sudden impact on the adult bee population may severely affect the colony's viral load and health status, leading to colony collapse when the infestation level is very high. In addition to the negative effects on bee health, mite infestation can negatively impact your colony's honey harvest during the season. Remember Patricia and her daughters? In colonies with brood, mite populations double about once a month, and even more quickly when the colony has large amounts of drone brood. 
or when varroa is transmitted from neighboring colonies. This is why reducing the varroa mite infestation is so important to keep your bees healthy. And do you know what the first step to take is? Counting your mites to estimate the level of infestation. For more info on varroa mite biology, you can also check our website and our blog at www.vetopharma.com. We propose a comprehensive varroa guide that you can download for free.